Hi, welcome to Jan's Stampin' Cafe. I'm Jan and I'm happy to be here and share my love of paper crafting with you. Today is January of 2021. In this time of so much digital communication, I think sending a card or note to someone is a more personal, genuine, and sincere communication. Sometimes it's just nice to receive a smile too. The current Stampin' Up! mini catalog has several very cute Stampin' die sets. My first choice is a set called Snailed It. It's about getting snail mail. I like the, the uh, whimsical style of the snail and mushroom stamps and the fun you've got mail sentiment. Some of the dies cut some of the snails in the designer series paper. With this set, I can also stamp the happy mail sentiment on the outside of an envelope. Who wouldn't want to see happy mail in their mailbox? When I saw it in the catalog, I fell in love with this mailbox card. But notice there isn't a, a mailbox stamp or die in the set. Well, Stampin' Up! gives demonstrators a list of supplies needed to recreate these photograph samples. So today I'm going to show you my version of this fun mailbox and card. If you want to know how to make other samples you see in the catalog, email me at the email address below in the description box and I'll be happy to help you. I will list the supplies for this card in the description box below. Now let's get started. The supplies we'll need for making this card today are, of course, the Snailed It stamp set and the dies I keep in mind inside the stamp case, making sure that my blades are away from the stamps to protect them from damage. And I will need some nested framelits. I have both the square and the oval framelits. I have really gotten um, my money's worth out of both these sets because I have the nested sizes of both plain ovals and scallop ovals, plain squares and scallop squares. So I have a lot of variety here and a size for almost every project. The next thing we need is of course our cardstock and paper bits and some decorative hearts. I've chosen um, the same colors as the um, catalog used. I just wanted to recreate exactly what I saw in the image. So I have pre I already die cut a lot of my pieces and stamped and prepared them so that you don't have to watch me color and fold and glue. This little snail was on the um, designer series paper, so I just cut him out. I was recreating the card that's on the uh, catalog page, so I wanted to use exactly the same thing. Any of the other images will be beautiful on this card. This is the die shape for the envelope that will be sticking out of our mailbox. And I just wanted to show you that when you cut this, you will also get the um, score lines for folding. I won't bore you with folding all of these before you, so I'll be really quick and we'll be right back. The next thing we're going to do is um, work with our card panel for the mailbox. That is, after all, what this is all about. So the first thing we I want is my oval die. Um, I like to choose an oval die that fits the size of my cardstock. My cardstock is three inches by five and a half inches. Three by five and a half. My oval die is exactly three inches. When choosing your oval die, you want your oval die to be as close to the size of your cardstock as possible. So if your die is two and seven eighths or three and an eighth, three and a quarter, you can adjust the size, the width of this piece of cardstock to fit your oval die. What I'm going to do is put the blade side of my, eye, my die down on the table and I'm going to pass the paper through the die. So if you look at it from the underside, the blade for this portion of the die is here and the other portion of the die is on top of the paper. We're doing basically a partial die cutting technique here. So I adjust my die so that my blade is going to be at the very top edge of that piece of paper and I will secure it and cut it. I'll be right back. Now when I cut this, I didn't run it all the way through the die machine. So you'll notice that there is no crease here from passing it all the way through. I simply die cut only the end. 
So here is the top of my mailbox. All right, next we need the legs of our mailbox, and that will be done with this die. This square die is one and three eighths inches, and we are going to position it partway off of the cardstock. You may choose whatever length of leg on your mailbox you would like, but again, I'm recreating the image that's in the catalog, so I'm going to push it up just a little bit. Now, before I decide for sure that I want this, I'm going to put my decorative panel on the front of my mailbox. I wanna make sure that there's plenty of room for my decoration and the slit that will hold my envelopes. So, if I need a little bit more space, I can slide the die down to make my legs a little bit shorter if I want to. I'm going to allow about a quarter of an inch or so here between my decorative panel and the legs. So I'll secure this piece and we'll get that cut. And here we are. Now here is my mailbox shape. The next thing I'm going to do is replace my decorative panel for positioning purposes. And what I need to do now is make the slit for all my little letters to lay in. So I'm going to uh, lay the mailbox on its side and I'm taking my clear ruler and my craft knife and pencil. Now you can draw a line on your mailbox if you want to. Basically what we're going to do is again about a quarter of an inch up from where we're going to place this decorative panel. Um, I'm going to make that slit. So I'm going to make just a little pencil mark here at the corners. That way when I go to affix it to the cardstock, I know exactly where I was planning on putting it. So now I'm going to use my clear ruler and I can see my pencil dots through the ruler and I'm allowing about a quarter, I'm putting them a quarter of an inch in under my ruler. This is a metal sided ruler. So I'm just gonna use my craft knife to cut along this edge. I'm planning to cut only two inches you can cut this however wide you want. All right, that was easy. So now I have a slit here so that my um, envelopes can slide right through. So now I'm going to affix the decorative panel onto the front of my mailbox. And I will use some of the um, Stamp and Seal Plus for that. I'm looking for my um, pencil marks and I'm just going to slide the panel up till I get to the corner and there we go. Next I can put my snail and my little message on here. I'm using dimensionals to attach these little pieces. I have um, the uh, normal size dimensionals on my snail and I have the mini dimensionals on the back. In fact, this one's even cut in half. It's so small. So my little snail is saying, you've got mail. So now it's time to arrange my envelopes coming out of the mailbox. You know, before I do that, I think I want to affix this to the card front. My card front or my card base is a slimline card base. I cut this seven and a half by eight and three quarters. It's scored at three and three quarters. My layer for the front of the card is three and a half by eight and a half. And again, we'll use the stamp and seal to attach that. card front is ready and now I can put my, my mailbox in place. And I'm going to use uh, Stampin' Dimensionals to attach the mailbox. I want to make sure I don't put any Stampin' Dimensionals right here because I may want to slide something in from the front as you'll see if I put my finger through there, I would need this space. So I'm just going to make sure that I put them to the side. 
and another demonstrator showed me this great trick with our uh, pickup tool for taking the backs off of your uh, dimensionals. It's a whole lot better than sitting there with your fingernails trying to lift it up. I haven't quite perfected it, but I'm working on it. Okay, I am going to place this down in about the center. And now I can add my envelopes. Um, I'm going to get the catalog picture so I can make it look just like that. there we go. I love the mailbox. I think it looks just like the photo. Oops, I didn't put my little heart resin hearts on. Let's get those on here really quickly. There we go. Now it looks just like the one in the catalog. If you put the mailbox on a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, don't stack the envelopes as high as I did here. This is a pattern of the mailbox that I made just out of copy paper. And I'm gonna store this in my stamp case for uh, my future reference. But you'll see it on this A2 envelope. It really does fill the face of a card that size. So you wanna remember not to stack your envelopes up too high here or you'll exceed the uh, limits of the envelope. I think the size is best on a slimline card or even an A7, which is a five by seven card. I noticed that my um, envelopes were accumulating quite a bit of thickness here as I stacked them onto the mailbox. So I think the next time I'll use the designer series paper, the paper will fold a lot flatter. Um, I could even put a gift card in here, flowers, maybe a little critter to wave at someone. I think this could be a great deal of fun to play with. Thank you for stopping in today. I sincerely appreciate you spending time here. I hope you enjoyed this video and please give me a thumbs up. This is how I'm encouraged to create more videos. If you click on my face, please you'll subscribe to my channel and please visit my Facebook group, Jan Stampin' Cafe and click on the join button. Stay safe and healthy and I'll see you again soon.